Uwe Greve is an executive vice president with a company called AVL, which does all kinds of powertrain research, all different kinds of powertrains. And Uwe, what I'm really interested in is the presentation you gave here at MBS, looking at electric cars from a well-to-wheels basis, looking at all the energy that goes into it. And I'm especially interested with what you found in the U.S., and would you please take it from there? Well, thank you, John. Yes, we did a comprehensive study on the battery electric vehicle and on the conventional vehicles, looking at the greenhouse gas emissions all the way from extracting raw material, building this, this vehicle, and using it. And what you see is the battery has a significant impact on this greenhouse gas emission. It's so energy intense from, well, getting the, the raw material, but even more producing the battery cells. So roughly speaking, um, for a passenger car vehicle, um, the battery, if it is a 60 kilowatt hour battery, accounts for as much uh, CO2 as the rest of the vehicle. And with this backpack, that is uh, determining when you have to break even. When we take a US energy mix, and of course we can do better using renewables, but if we use a US energy mix to produce such a battery, well we start with a backpack that is probably a, a one ton per 10 kilowatt hour of a battery. And when we take a C-segment vehicle, um, we calculate a 85,000 mile break even for a conventional gasoline uh, powered engine with this battery electric. So what that means is there's a lot of variables in there. We need to work on the entire chain and we need to get the energy consumption and the greenhouse gas um, uh, emission of the battery production down. If that is the case and we use renewables, the battery is a clear winner. But we need to look at this on, from a holistic perspective. You're talking about manufacturing all this with the existing U.S. grid, and you're using a mix. So in some Absolutely. places it might be cleaner, in other places exactly. it could be dirtier. Exactly. But on average, you're saying that you have to drive over 80,000 miles before an electric car catches up to the, the what a gasoline engine on, car On would average. Be. And this puts the, the work and the load to us as a society, we need to work on all these um, elements. We need to work on the battery electric vehicle, but we also need to work on the grid energy and on the renewables that go into the production. Yeah. Does this take into account how much energy it takes to make the lithium, for example, that goes into the yeah. battery? Yes, we, we, we uh, took also care of that part of the mining and of the refining of that. There is one additional upside potential, and that is the recycling, which needs to have more attention. Um, Your study does not include recycling. We currently did not include the recycling. There is so much going on. We are currently looking into that. And one of the findings that we currently have is the predominant recycling method today is to melt it down. Um, there are new technologies where you separate by mechanical separation first, and then you separate a more well, refined or clean product. And I think that gets us a, a big step further. When you're doing this uh, greenhouse gas emission comparison, do you also include oil refining and transport and all that? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, we, we include that. Um, but oil refining, I mean, we have with, with, the, with the crude oil a product that, well, has a pretty energy, uh, well, efficient process to get to, to gasoline. So it is, uh, if there is not the CO2 released to the atmosphere, it is an ideal um, fuel for transportation. One other thing that you had in your presentation that I actually wrote down is you said the future is electric, yeah. but the ICE is here to stay. Absolutely. Why do you say that? I'm saying that because a hybrid and the combination of a combustion engine and an electric motor is something that makes so much sense. There is um, such a synergy between these two machines. The combustion engine well, actually likes to run steady state in a controlled environment. An electric motor can do transients. If you combine these two machines, you have a hybrid. And for for us in AVL, when we talk about the future, that is an electrified propulsion system starting with a hybrid. The pure electric uh, vehicle, that will be a huge share, but we believe that with um, the hybrid efficiency improvement and also with the use of synthetic fuels, there is another pathway, think of electrified fuels. So an electrified fuel with an internal combustion engine that is clean is a very good machine. Did you do a, a break-even comparison of a battery electric compared to one of these hybrids? 
How many miles yeah. would you have yeah. to drive? So, to? So, so the number that I was quoting was the 80, 85,000 miles yeah. includes a mild hybrid 48 volt okay. that becomes a, a standard at least in in the European environment. Also here in, in the US, we had we had mild hybrid uh, solution years ago. Um, when it comes to to more capacity or more capability on the electric machine, you can add more efficiency, and then it would improve, but you add product cost. And one, one final question then. How much opportunity is there to improve the efficiency of an electric vehicle just with the electric motor? Oh, I, I believe we are in the very beginning of automotive use of electric motors. I just want to draw your attention to the thermal management. Um, well, the sizing of, of such an electric motor is determined by how can I get rid of the excess heat when I fully utilize it? That drives the dimension. I believe when we do the right thermal management, you can downscale the electric motor that reduces weight and it adds a lot of efficiency to the vehicle. So the efficiency of an electric motor is pretty good, but we need to look at the entire vehicle system and balance this out. Okay, Uwe Grebe, thanks so much for your time. Very interesting with uh, your research here, shall we? Thank you, John. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much. Shiloh designs and manufactures innovative, multi-component, multi-material, lightweight solutions. Our disruptive technologies are transforming the mobility industry, meeting the needs of our customers today and planning for tomorrow.